I have as many presser feet in my accessory box as I have shoes in my closet. In other words, shoes for my feet and shoes for my sewing machine are both high in number. Before wearing shoes for any length of time, new shoes, I wear them at home to break them in. That's comparable to the same way I treat sewing machine shoes, otherwise known as presser feet. I test out their features on small projects. Use huck toweling and two unique sewing machine feet, the flower stitch foot and the ruffler foot. Use these specialty feet to attach ruffles and to add floral trim. We'll take another look at this towel with a little embellishment added. Here we have stitched a variety of circles to create flowers using the flower stitch foot or the flower stitch attachment. Easy to stitch and then adding ruffles very evenly spaced ruffles to the lower edge of the toweling. Now this is huck toweling, very traditional type of fabric to use for toweling, very absorbent. So we've kind of combined three different things, the toweling and the two embellishments. Let's take a look at this flower stitch foot. It has many elements to it. The circular disc is what's going to create these stitches, the round stitches. The plastic disc has grooves along the side and a lever the guides in the grooves. Each groove stands for a stitch, represents a stitch. There's a stitch selector in the middle and that points either to the small, the medium, or in this instance to the very the larger stitch. And I'll show you how to change that length or that position. And then there's a screw that's going to aid in the changing of the size of the flower. This needle bar fits over the needle bar. It's really not a needle bar, but it's appendage that goes over the needle bar. And every time your needle goes up and down, the attachment takes one more stitch. Kind of a unique design. This works best on sewing machines where you can manually drop the feed dogs. So lower the feed dogs on your sewing machine. Use decorative thread. I have rayon thread, Madeira thread in the upper thread, and I've used bobbin fill, a lightweight thread in the bobbin. And you can loosen your thread your tension of your top thread by two numbers. I'm just going to show you how to do the adjustment. First of all, you would loosen the screw. As I mentioned, that's how the sizing is changed. And then you can raise the bar that takes each stitch with your finger, or I like to just use an awl. And by doing this, then I can rotate the stitch selector and choose, I'm going to choose the largest size, then tighten the screw. I've often forgotten to do that, so tighten that screw. I have a machine set for a three-step zigzag and have the rayon thread and I'll just sew it. I don't even have to use my hands, it just sews in the circle, creating the largest stitch. It sews around. And after you've stitched the large stitch, we'll just cut the threads. It's coming to an end. And I'll change this to the smaller stitch. There's the medium, but I'll show you that in a minute. I'd loosen again the screw, raise that bar, and move the stitch selector to the smallest groove, which happens to be the middle stitch, the smaller stitch. Now I'm going to change to just a zigzag stitch. And as I do that, it will stitch that smaller interior circle using a different stitch. It's really simple. The combinations are almost endless when you think about it because you use any type of satin stitch that's comparable with a zigzag. Utility stitch, you could even use a straight stitch. This little chart just shows here's the small, here's the medium, and then the larger with a utilitarian stitch or utility stitch. If you combine a variety of stitches and sizes, you get a lot of different looks to your flowers. So I have stitched on a stabilizer and also wonder under so I can fuse it later on to my towel or you could stitch it on. To add the embroidery we simply did a little drawing. Since this is so simple we're using the Fabco markers draw in some stems, little grasses and you have a quick design it gives you one of the embellishments for this toweling. The ruffler foot is the second specialty shoe for your sewing machine. This presser foot has a lot of configurations and design elements to it. But let's break it down. The section that fits on the ankle of the machine is a traditional clasp. Just screw it onto your machine after removing the presser foot. 
Then the C clamp goes over the needle bar and every time the needle bar goes up and down a ruffle stitch could be taken. I mentioned could be taken because there's a little gauge in the very front of the ruffler foot which determines how many gathers or ruffles are stitched. Every stitch, every sixth stitch, or at every twelfth stitch. You simply raise the guide and move it to the slot that you would like. In order to know the slot that you'd like, you need to do a little testing. And on a scrap of fabric, you may want to consider doing this. On the scrap of the fabric I used, here I have a ruffle at every stitch. It's very close together. Here it is at every sixth stitch and then a much looser ruffle at every twelfth stitch. I chose every sixth stitch. Now the fabric, rather than using a single layer, I have a double ruffle. So the fabric was folded in half, wrong sides together, one end was sewn closed, and then serge or zigzag the edges. It's easier to guide through the foot if the fabrics are treated as one. Let's take another look at the foot, the profile of it. To gather the fabric, we're going to place the ruffle fabric in this groove right between these, this two mechanism and the machine and the foot together will automatically gather it very evenly at every sixth stitch. How about that? If you're doing lots of gathers, there's nothing faster or more accurate than this. So on the side, I'm going to slide the ruffle fabric to be ruffled underneath that area. When I get the fabric in the needle area, I'll just sink this the needle, lower the presser foot. Now as I stitch, every sixth stitch it will cause a tuck. And you can sew kind of at a medium speed and you can be assured of accuracy. During your test you will find out that if you change the stitch length you could also vary at which point, or the distance I should say, between the ruffles. So there, there are a few variables, not only every sixth or twelfth stitch, but changing the stitch length will also change the ruffle appearance. But it's very, very even. Now it's stitched the whole length, and as I hold this up, you'll see this very even stitching across the edge. Now I mentioned we're working with huck toweling, and huck toweling is sold by the yard, but it's all automatically finished, comes with a salvage on both sides. So it's finished on both sides. All you have to do is, after pre-washing it, cut it to the length that you'd like and serge that edge. Then meet right sides together and straight stitch the ruffle to your fabric. At one end you may find that you have a little extra fabric, if it's, then you can fold it back. If you don't have enough, just clip off one of the ruffles and make it work. After all, this is toweling. For other home decorating projects, that's the same thing I do. So here I have a towel, a small project. With it I learned two feet processes, working with the flower stitch foot and the ruffler foot. Nancy's Notions offers a full selection of sewing notions to test out your new sewing or quilting skills. Order your supplies today.